AP Statistics. So today we're going to get into 5.2, some actual probability rules. Uh, in the first section of 5.1, we just got a little bit of the idea of probability and looked at some simulation. Now we're actually going to get into some of the actual, you know, theoretical math where we're, we're calculating some things in this section. So by the end of the section, you should be able to uh, give a probability model for a chance process with equally likely outcomes and use it to find the probability of an event. Uh, use basic probability rules, includes, including the complement rule and the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. And use a two-way table or Venn diagram to model chance uh, chance process and calculate probabilities involving two events and apply the general addition rule to calculate probabilities. So some, some theoretical math going on in this section. So uh, in section 5.1, we used simulation to imitate chance behavior, um, but fortunately we don't have to always rely on simulations to determine the probability of a particular outcome. We can do it theoretically. Um, so a uh, probability model is a description of some chance process that consists of two parts, a list of possible outcomes and a probability of each outcome. Um, the list of all possible outcomes is called the sample space. So um, when you are doing, you know, things. If I'm if I'm rolling a die, uh, we might have. Oh, sorry, I'm not showing this yet. Um, if we roll a die, uh, we have six possible outcomes. Very simple. And if the die is fair, we have a probability for each of those outcomes. It'd be one six, though, assuming we have a fair die. We may not have a fair die. If I flip a coin, my possible outcomes are just those two outcomes, heads or tails. Um, but uh, and, and and if it's a fair coin, they're they're each one fifth or one half. But they're not necessarily. It doesn't have to be that. If I flip my phone, right? I talked about that uh, before. Uh, there's two possible outcomes. My screen breaks or it doesn't break. Um, but they're not equally likely outcomes. So I still have a sample space there where I can think about it as two possible outcomes, um, uh, but uh, I, I don't know exactly the probability of each. And so for me to actually learn that probability, I'd have to do something else. I, I can't just calculate that one real simply, theoretically, with equally likely outcomes. And realize that that same example, when I, when I flip my phone, uh, it's you know, that, that's one thing I'm talking about, my screen breaking, but I could also think about something else, some other event I'm interested in, some other outcome I'm interested in. Uh, maybe I'm interested in whether it lands face up or face down, right? If I'm doing like, you know, I don't have a coin to do a coin flip and I'm flipping my phone in a, you know, for a sports sporting event or something to see who, who gets the kickoff or the ball or whatever. Um, so there can be a number of, of different things that you're dealing with. You can get more complex with a couple of things. So uh, yeah, it can be very simple to very complex. So if I roll two dice, here's an example of a sample space of the two dice. If I have a red die and a blue die or whatever those two colors are. Um, so now uh, it kind of multiplies out. I have 36 possible outcomes. And so that is my sample space. I could get a one and a one on those dice. I could get a one and a two or a two and a one. And those are different outcomes, by the way, because of if we think about the, the color of those dice. Um, and so uh, that's, you know, our sample slices could get more complex very quickly um, to think about all the possible outcomes. Um, and so in this case, if we're going with dice that are fair, uh, we, we do know that each of these 36 outcomes is equally likely. And that makes things a little nicer when we are dealing with sample spaces. A lot of our coin flips and our die rolls and our spinners and things like that, we like to, we like to work with equally likely outcomes. Um, but realize that's, that's certainly not always the case. You know, if I flip my phone or, you know, it's not equally likely that my screen will break. If I drive home from school, it's not equally, hopefully it's not equally likely that you're going to get into a car accident or not get in a car accident, right? Some hopefully things that have very low probabilities or very high probabilities, but uh, anytime there's uncertainty, we can deal in terms of possible outcomes and, and probabilities of those outcomes. Um, so then we start to put things together. We start to be interested in an event. Um, so an event is any collection of outcomes from the sample space. It could just be a, we call it like a single outcome. We might be interested in, I want to specifically get this five and that four on like, I want the red five and the blue four. That's exactly what I want. So that is an outcome, but we could actually make that our event if that's the, the thing we're interested in. But it can also be a collection of multiple outcomes. So something we might be interested in, and a lot of times we use letters to represent this, is that what if we get a sum of say five, for instance, when we roll two dice? Um, and so we roll our two dice. What is you know what is the the, the probability of that particular event? 
So when we look back at our chart, we have our 36, we ended up with actually four different things that add up to five. We could get a one and a four, a two and a three, a three and a two, or a four and a one. Right? And notice that because the way that the dice are, it helps to have these colored differently. Realize that a one and a four is different than a four and a one. Right? That's Those are two different outcomes in that sample space of 36 possible outcomes. So we do count both of those, and, and then like two and three and three and two. Uh, however, I'll kind of give you a heads up that like if they're the same, a two and a, uh, like if we have like a two and a two, for instance, which doesn't add to five, but like that outcome, there's not a separate one for another two and a two. Like that's just one of the outcomes. Um, so here we have four unique outcomes out of those 36 possible outcomes. Since they're equally likely, we can go with a nice four out of 36 probability. Each one had a 1 36th probability, so we add those up, and so uh, that gives us our probability. 4 out of 36, which we could reduce. Um, so if you're dealing with equally likely outcomes, and that's very key, if dealing with equally likely outcomes, we're going to start simple, and then we're going to work our way up in, in probability. But if we're dealing with equally likely outcomes, like dice, or um, coins, or shuffled decks of cards, and it's you know important cards can be a little tricky, uh, or spinners that are fair and things like that. If we if we dealing with that, uh, then the probability of an event can be found by using the formula. Uh, so some event A, the number of outcomes in the event. Uh, so whatever the event is, so sometimes we'll call those favorable outcomes. Uh, the, the, the thing we're interested in occurring, whether it happens or not, and then the total number of possible outcomes in the sample space. Uh, so that die roll, you know, we had four favorable outcomes out of 36 possible outcomes, and that gives us that probability of that particular event. Oh, uh, you could just do it on a single die, right? The probability for getting a five is the one good outcome out of the six bad outcomes. If I want an odd number, well, now I have three. I've got one, three, five, so the three out of six, or one half probability. Um, and so that's our um, our most kind of basic probability rule. It won't stay that basic, but that is our most basic one when we're dealing with those equally likely events. All right, so uh, just kind of to summarize up some of the uh, some other basic probability rules. Um, uh, a um, we must have all outcomes in the sample space equally likely. Uh, and so, um, uh, the probability that event occurs is, yeah, so if we're dealing with equally likely events, we have that, um, that the kind of the one we just dealt with. The number of outcomes, favorable outcomes out of the number of possible outcomes uh, gives us its individual probability. The probability is always between zero and one. Um, zero is impossible, something that is impossible, so we really don't really talk about the probability of things that are impossible because it's, you know, there's no uncertainty, it's just impossible. Um, and then one is something that is guaranteed. Um, and so we don't talk about probability of that because there's no uncertainty. But everything in between, there's some level of uncertainty. It might be super highly likely or very unlikely, but uh, we, we will deal with the probabilities of anything in between there. But zero is impossible, one is completely certain. There's nothing beyond one, there's nothing below zero in terms of probability. All possible outcomes together must have probabilities that add up to one. So if we add up all the possible outcomes in our sample space, it should add up to one. Otherwise, you don't actually have all the possible outcomes. If there's anything outside of that, um, then you haven't included everything. So once you add up all those probabilities, it should add up to one. And then the probability that an event does not occur is one minus the probability that an event it does occur. So if I want to know if there's the rolling a five, if it's four out of 36, the probability of not getting a five on the on the two dice is one minus that, um, and so 32 out of 36. One minus four out of 36 gives us you know the 32 out of 36 in that case. So here is our complement rule, and and this is one symbol we use. This little a with the c up there. You also sometimes see this with like a little apostrophe, um, like a with a little. Uh, it's like the prime or whatever symbol, little apostrophe. That's another way that you'll see this maybe sometimes, um, but that's the complement, so that it does not occur, and that's some symbols we'll use. And uh, I don't think I even explained this notation, P of A, it's the probability of an event, the P of A, so that's P is kind of the probability of. And so the probability of a complement is one minus the probability of the event, uh, and so that's the probability that event does not occur. All right, so... If we roll two fair dice, what is the probability that the sum is six? And so we can kind of go back to that sample space for the two dice. 
uh, example, um, we had the 36 possible outcomes in our sample space. Um, and so probably we get a sum of six is um, these, you know, there's five favorable outcomes. We could get a five and a one, a four and a two, a three and a three, and no, no, there's just one of those, a two and a four, and a one and a five. And so there are five favorable outcomes, and that's the probability we'd get the six. Um, if we roll two fair dice, what is the probability that we get the sum is five or six? Um, so what we can do, there's a probability rule with this. If we, we want to throw in this or, we can ultimately add those together. So the probability of a five we got is five sixths. Um, and so the probability that the sum is, uh, let's see, am I messing this up? Let me check this out. All right, sorry, we're good. So the probability that the sum was five, we had that. So the sum was five, we had calculated that before. That was four out of 36. The probability that the sum is six uh, was five out of six. And so we can actually add those together. What's the probability that you get a sum of five or six? Uh, we add those four, four, 36, four out of those 36 outcomes plus the five out of the 36 outcomes all adds up to be nine out of the 36 outcomes. Um, and, and so ultimately that ends up being a 25% if we reduce that. So if we're dealing with two events that are mutually exclusive, that means that they never happen at the same time. Um, and so there's no, no overlap between those. You can't have the sum be a five and the sum be a six. So if we are dealing with mutually exclusive events, another term you'll see used is disjoint, it means the same thing um, if you ever see that. Um, so mutually exclusive or disjoint events, um, if they have no outcomes in, in common, so it could never occur together, we can never get the sum of two dice be five and the sum of two dice be six. Um, then we can just, uh, and this is, there's no, yeah. Another way of saying that is that the probability of A and B, those two events, is impossible. Then we can uh, find the probability by just adding those two together, and that five should not be in there. So the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, or lets us add probabilities. But this only works if they are mutually exclusive or disjoint. So make sure that you're cautious of that. Um, that only works if we're dealing with mutually exclusive events.